this article, this list comes to a, a pretty, pretty exciting conclusion. The last two are, if nothing else, compelling. Uh, Judgment Day for Meta being like a huge, like, whoa, like, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it depends on Zuck's uh, future. Who knows? If Facebook crumbles, that's going to mean opportunity for something else. The players change. The game remains the same. I think that's my parting shot mostly. Um, and yeah, don't don't believe everything you read on the internet. Yeah, absolutely. Fundamentals. I like it, man. What is up, Modern Commerce listeners? I want to show you an amazing app we've been using called Triple Whale. You can check it out. Try triplewhale.com. It has all of the business health metrics and growth metrics you could possibly need all in one place, right? So everybody can get on the same page. This has revolutionized our ability to help grow brands and collaborate with brands. Everyone can get on the same page on the most important metrics. So if you're a media buyer, you can come into this and you can just use this little pin icon right here. And you can pin to the top the most important stuff to you. So if I'm a media buyer, I might have ROAS, I might, I might have ad spend, I might have new customer ROAS, right? But if I'm an owner, maybe those things aren't as important to me. Maybe I just want, you know, net pro, show me the net profit, show me the sales, right? Show me the number of orders. Um, so everyone on the team can get in line, get, you know, on the same page of what the most important growth metrics are, because it's different for every brand. Um, so grab Triple Whale at trytriplewhale.com. Use it. I promise you it will make your growth path far more clear. And uh, enjoy this episode of Modern Commerce. Hey, Modern Commerce. Welcome back. Casey here, as always, with my man, John. And today we're going to be buying or selling marketing trends of 2022. Before we take a look at those, John, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm excited about this one. First of all, I just, I love like people's predictions. Uh, and maybe it's because I'm like, you know, an arguer. I like like tearing down people's predictions. Uh, and also, you know, as someone who just recently got into uh, to doing a little bit of trading, a little bit of, little trading, day trading, I, uh, just on the side, on the side of, of marketing, uh, I, I'm excited to, you know, to give my bearish and bullish signals on, on, on growth, on e-commerce growth. So let's yeah, do man, it. it's going to be exciting. Um, let's dive right on into it. I think you've yeah. got it pulled up over there. I do. Let's, yeah. You want to let everyone know like what our format here is going to be basically. Yeah. Yeah. So we mess around with format quite a bit. But right now, this is a list of just 10 trends from Forbes.com. I think it was put together, uh, yeah, December 16th of 2021. Uh, so it's kind of forecasting trends for 2022. Um, yep. And we're just going to take turns kind of, uh, how should I say it, just summarizing each point, And then uh, we'll, we'll give a little bit of analysis and kind of decide generally between the two of us whether we agree or disagree whether this is a real trend or not, or or if there's if or if it holds any water, really, I think is what we should judge it on, because you could say something that's going to be true but might not be helpful, right? Like our last episode, right? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so um, we'll go back and forth. Uh, Casey will kind of read our first trend here and give us a summary of it, and then I'll I'll hop in. Yeah. So the first trend here. Uh, hopefully you can all read this just fine. But the first trend is email, the most important channel. Email being the most important channel. Um, so yeah, basically there is this CMO of a big, uh, of Litmus, a big email marketing tool. Uh, and they've got some data here to back it up. 91% of survey respondents maintained email marketing is critical to the overall success of their company. This is up 20% uh, from 2019. And more than 40% of companies intend to increase their investment in 2022. John, have any uh, first takes on this? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, like, okay, most important. I don't know if I'm buying on that, uh, but like, and of course, like, so to this person, it is, you know, it is, the, like, I see, I understand why her position is this, Uh but I, you know, I don't know if I would go with most important, but I do, I think that it's had a resurgence, right? Like we had this kind of long time talk of like email is dead or maybe not email is dead, but like just focus heavy on other channels. Uh, and 2021 is sort of brought, especially in e-commerce, like a, uh, online sales, this sort of hardship from paid traffic channels where email has been a, a really great supporter and a really great way to like offset some of the, the ROAS uh, dips, right? So most important channel of 2022. I don't know if I would, I don't know if I'm buying that exact, you know, point, but I am going to buy here because 
I, I, I just, I, I want to buy the overall like vibe of this point and say that yes, owned channels uh, are increasingly important and monetizing owned channels. So email, SMS, push notifications, whatever, app downloads, whatever it is you have, uh, monetizing owned channels is increasingly important. So I am, I am buying the, you know, sentiment of, of point one. How about you? Well, interesting there. Um, astute analysis, first of all, I'll say. Um, and just so everybody knows, in case you haven't seen other episodes of ours, uh, you can't be much more of an email truther than I am, um, at least as far as our modern commerce world goes. So I, I actually have a different take, though. Um, I, I'm taking this very literally, uh, taking this by its words, email, most important channel. Um, like I said, I love email. I think it's hugely important. I think many brands are guilty of overlooking email. I do agree that it will become more and more important in the future as it gets harder on other platforms and whatnot. Owned audiences are important, but I don't believe that email will be the most important channel in 2022. That's just, that's a huge Fair. leap. The one thing you can't do on email, or at least like solely through email, is acquire. You just, yeah. you cannot, you can't email somebody you don't know already. So uh, for that reason, I can't imagine it being, and this is generally speaking across all e-commerce. Um, I don't think it can be the most important channel. So yeah, I want to sell it. If, if uh, you know, if we're taking that at, at its literal words, then I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, you can't scale with email. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm with you there, but I'm just, I'm taking it at its sentiment because it's not like we're going to go into like SMS, most important channel, Google, most important channel, right? Like, um, but yeah, I'm with I'll, you. I'll, uh, I'll, how about we, we, uh, compromise, call this like a sell plus. Cause I agree well, with the sentiment as well, but I'll sell this statement as it is. I think we both agree here. We we're, se we're selling the statement, buying the sentiment. Yeah. And, and just setting the, the precedent here, I think we should take the words for what they are because, you know, as people write content, those content creators, you know, it they'll is. say anything to get the yes. click. So I want to, I want to hold them to the words they use. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So trend loyalty, a thing of the past, basically uh, the point here is that like loyalty programs specifically think of like uh, punch card programs uh, at your like local coffee shop. Um, you know, so the e-commerce version is like, you know, every few, every, based on how many purchases you've had, you get like a free item or something like that. Or, um, you know, signing up for a, yeah, just a loyalty program where you get uh, benefits for purchasing multiple times or a thing of the past. And, uh, you know, the point here is people crave membership and community. Um, and that like probably, you know, what we call them ambassador programs or membership programs, micro continuity things that offer people value, you know, like free shipping or discounts or exclusive access, uh, you know, to, to like limited edition products and things like that are more of the way in 2022. Um, yeah, Casey go. Yeah. Uh, again, just taking it at its word here. Um, I, I don't think these will become extinct, right? That's a pretty that's a pretty hot take to say like something's going to completely disappear. And coming from email, this is interesting context because we've harped on it a bunch of times for over a decade. Probably people have been saying that email is dead. And I mean, the first point was that email is going to be huge again. So um, whenever somebody's saying that things are going to go away completely, uh, I'm probably going to sell most of those things. But mm -hmm. I might agree with the sentiment a little bit as, as like brands especially become, have like more social missions and more like social awareness and they just kind of get involved with other discussions and stuff. I think that people are choosing to resonate a little bit more with brand stances on things and buying, buying for different reasons, all kinds of different reasons really. And loyalty might become one that's deprioritized um, in these programs. You know, if, if that's a reason, if that happens, why have loyalty programs? I get where they're going. But I'm I'm kind of wishy washy on this one. I, I guess I'd I'd kind of be on that kind of same area, like sell maybe sell plus. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna clarify something here. In that, like you said, like okay, let's hold them to the specific words they use. I mean, they wrote a whole thing here that we're summarizing. It's fair. Um, so like just grading it on like loyalty, a thing of the past. That's not really fair. They wrote other words. That's um, fair. But loyalty programs becoming a thing of the past. Like I mean, right. I. That I hear that, and I guess I'm thinking like it can become antiquated. Um, I'm taking it more of like extinct. Like people will stop doing that. I don't. Yeah, think no, and I, I think, um, and I don't know that I would say that that's what the words say, but like that maybe is the sentiment. I, 
uh, if you think about it, like, I actually don't think this is that revolutionary of a statement. So like, Casey, like, tell me a business that you know that has a loyalty program where like, you know, you get points for purchasing for every time you purchase something there. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the, the coffee shop analogy. I think that yeah, grocery stores, usually coffee yeah. shop. Sure. Sure. Grocery stores, those things like that. Can you think Gas of stations. one that's online? Um, off the top of my head. No, but, uh, but they exist. I mean, Probably, but like it, it's a common model in physical, like retail, especially sure. like grocery store, like grocery stores, coffee shops, consumables, things that people are going to come back to often. Um, it's like what he's saying, the membership model or like the ambassador programs mm -hmm. or, you know, some kind of uh, micro continuity that's already more common in the online space. So like, this is kind of like not that great of a revolutionary state. It's like, yeah, if we were talking about like a 2015, 2012 trends article, this would be like super smart, you know, but, uh, in 2022, I'm like, I guess it's kind of like already a thing in the past. Uh, you know, it's just not really that adopted. So yeah, will they go away? You know, if we're getting literal, I'm selling on the statement, but yeah, I mean, we're already there. Like this isn't a future cast. So I'm a buy here. I actually, you swayed me on that one. I think I did uh, not look into these numbers much. I think we looked into our own ones. We were reading a little bit more um, after your analysis. I'll, I'll agree with you. I'd say we probably are buying that one. It's not that revolutionary of a statement. And maybe I'm just trying to stir up some. It's pretty safe, honestly. It's pretty yeah. safe. So that's true. Uh, and that's a great segue into the next one here because okay. I. To, to give away a piece of the analysis, I feel pretty similarly about this one. Uh, trend, foresight, the new priority. Um, you know, this just basically, I mean, I don't want to put words in their mouth here, but they're saying people who can get ahead of trends are going to do well. Um, being able to, to tell what's going to happen would be awesome, right? Um, yeah, that's, that's most of what's going on here. Uh, not a lot of substance in this one. John, what do you think? Yeah, this seems like a little bit lazy to me, uh, like on the writer's part. So I don't know if it's a good thing. I mean, I'm buying the statement, I suppose. Like, no, I'm actually not going to buy the statement because he said foresight is the new opportunity. It's not new. Like, yep. you know what I mean? Like for, for, foresight and the ability to forecast has always created opportunity. So this isn't new at all. Um, yeah, it, it's talking about brands who can guess trends are going to, you know, miss out on financial setback. And I'm just I, I'm like, that's always been true. Nothing has really changed at all. I, this is a hard sell for me. This makes no sense. Yeah. Um, lazy is a good way to put it. And also just kind of, I mean, for lack of a better term, just like not very, uh, not very insightful at all. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, if you could tell the future, like you'd be much more successful. Wow. Like business, business. Buy, would be more successful. Buying on that statement. <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> Yeah, good. Super smart. Uh, okay. I, I, but just, just one thing I will say, I think what they're talking about a little bit is may, if I'm trying to bail them out a little bit, they're talking about like data loss and like hindsight is kind of like reporting. And if you're talking about, you won't be able to rely on reporting as much. I think that's kind of what they're going for here. Maybe, okay. but still hate the way they worded it. The argument is not made that way really. And, but, and it's always been true whether or not you have data or not, if you know what's coming in the future, yeah, you're going to be successful. And Historically, looking back at at performance, how things have played out, it's typically how they tend to keep playing out. So right. I'm not all for a huge change in that. Uh, yeah, I, maybe we don't get it. Maybe we're not getting maybe, it. Maybe we're not there. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it seems pretty obvious. All right, uh, <clears throat> discounts losing favor fast. So essentially, you know, this is kind of saying like just offering that discount to acquire the customer or to push the customer over the line to buy is maybe losing favor with things that are like more based on directly what, so, so selling based on the value prop of the product, the value prop of the brand, you know, or uh, based on like things we know about the buyer, like, Hey, free shipping or really push them over the line or yeah, basically you, it says, Hey, unique selling points are more powerful than discounts. Um, and, and like creating a strong value prop without a discount is better than a discount. And so discounts are losing favor fast. Um, go ahead. Yeah. You know, this, this actually kind of feels like the last one you have kind of why people buy and this, uh, traditional thing that typically has worked is no longer going to work the same. 
Um, and this one is a little bit easier to wrap your head around, I think, um, because lo- like you said, loyalty programs weren't ever such a huge deal to begin with. But discounts are, right? That's the big difference here. Discounts, some some businesses build their business on <coughs> Um I think this kind of thing is cyclical. I think this kind of comes and goes. I think there's been separate iterations of this that have, that maybe have happened, different trends. Um, and I do, I guess this, I agree with the sentiment. I do believe people are buying for unique reasons, unique selling points, as they put it. Um, but at the same time, I just, I think if people, if brands start or stop utilizing discounts as much, then six months go by then whoever starts using discounts again is probably going to get a little bump like right. so I, I, it just and we're all going to fall off yeah there's a point of diminishing returns to this one but I, again i'm kind of wishy-washy what, what's your insight yeah uh so i let me give you a li- like a let me just throw a little like wrinkle into this one is i think that what they're saying is that discounts are lo- losing favor like with the brands not that discounts will become less effective right so like brands brands are more and more hesitant to use discounts and want to use discounts less and less. I would say that generally as a trend, I am a buy on that. I'm not saying that the brands are correct in that thinking. Um, In fact, I don't necessarily think they're correct in that thinking, but that like, yeah, I do see a trend of brands uh, questioning their pricing practices more. Online yeah. brands, especially. That, that's interesting. I think that I, I'm reading this one sentence that says brands don't believe that they'll keep customers around using discounts. So I guess that's what I was looking at. Like, I guess I disagree with that. I think if if a customer purchases from you because you offered a discount and the other brand that they were considering doesn't, as long as you deliver on that that value prop and you enjoy what you got and it's a a uh, you know a brand you'd reasonably buy more things from, not you know, right. not just a, a single skew brand, um, then I believe people will come back. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that version of it. Same with you. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think they're ineffective. I think maybe there are brands that are like questioning their, their pricing practices more, but I will say this about that, like what you just said. And it is like, maybe there is a correlation from brands that have to rely heavily on discounts in order to acquire customers and brands that have a hard time keeping customers around and that that correlation is not causation specifically yeah. those brands don't have as good of products sure sure yeah yeah if you're just just maybe just something to think about i'm just saying we did an episode quite a ways back now uh that was geared around like race to the bottom kind of thing i think yeah. we covered some of this stuff here and i think our if i remember right some of our analysis ended up being that like if you're looking at it like that then you know, your days are probably numbered because that's not yeah. a great view to have, honestly. Like, yeah, yeah. obviously you want to, you want to, you want to give an excess of value, you know, compared to what you charge. Just yeah. So, that so I would say happy. that brands that use brands that are, have really great products and have really strong LTVs and use discounts to acquire still have strong LTVs, right? Like people, and it just gets easier for them to get people in the door, but it's like, if you're going to get hooked on a pro, like, I don't know. I'm looking at stuff that's on my desk right now. Like, you know, like here's a, like a shampoo, right? Shampoo for sensitive skin. It's the brand that we've worked with. Like, look, if I had sensitive skin, I tried that. And it was like, that was way better. And I bought it on a discount. It doesn't, I can't live my life without it now. Right. Like I got to buy it again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't don't necessarily agree with the sentiment from uh, the brands, but yeah. What do you got? What's your example? Thing on my desk, Bluetooth speaker here. Yeah, right? just for when 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 my uh, my computer speakers aren't quite loud enough for the music I'm jamming out to, right? Yeah. Like I just turn this baby on. I bought this on sale. It was in like a two pack and save like forty percent or whatever, right? Like off of the one. I guess not off the of both. Um, <laughs> that'd be a great yeah. offer. But uh, and then I, you know, we lost one or it broke, and I replaced it full price. You know, later on because I was like, yeah, I liked it. So yeah, I, I guess I'm saying I'm a hard. If you need more Bluetooth speakers for other spots in your house, you probably go back to that same brand because yeah. it works well. And, and not to mention, as we talked about, like owned audiences aren't going anywhere and discounts and like contact information go so hand in hand on right. so many brands. So I don't think so discounts are going anywhere. Over harping on this, I think that we both are, are a big, a hard sell, if I'm summarizing, I think we're both a hard sell on why brands 
are like why discounts are, are losing favor with brands. Like, I don't think that like we're in agreement with the brands thinking on this. However, I am a buy on the statement that I think that many brands are sort of questioning their discounting practices. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're landing in the middle on these a lot. I mean, are yeah. we going to go bold here and go hard, sell hard, hard buy? Yeah. Well, are, on this one specifically? I mean, on any, all of them, really. Yeah. Let's say, I mean, where are you landing on this one? I'd, I'd land in the sell territory because I just, I, I get the losing favor fast, but that, Again, I, I guess I'm reading it like they're going to stop doing it quite so much is how you put it. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm, I'm I might dislike it. If we're, if we're going to say, okay, this, this sentiment is not that it's not about the brands. It's about like whether discounts are effective or not. I'm a very hard sell. Are they, are they staying or are they, they going away? Oh yeah. Are they staying or are they going away? They're staying. Yeah. That's, they're what, staying. that's what I see it as mostly. So yeah. Okay. Uh, war on data. All right. Okay. This one's pretty short. I think I'm just going to read this one straight up how it is. The war on data will escalate and marketers will lose access to more data than they have come to rely on, says global marketing consultant Tim Parkin. Uh, first data, first party data will become the foundation of all marketing initiatives. Uh, many organizations who have not prepared will scramble to collect this data to stay competitive. I don't even think this is like, like this is this, this, would be a great, this would be a great trend analysis for 20. Like if this were That's, December, 2021, I'd be like, who is this guy? I need him to tell me the lottery numbers to pick. Like, exactly. Yeah. And I, I guess it's your, feel free to color that in a little more if you want. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, that, that's, that's really it. Like this kind of already happened all, all over the course of 2021. So to say like, yeah, it's uh, like, how do I say it? I like, you know, if, it, it's it's like predicting the continuation of a hot streak, right? So it's like, uh, yeah. you know, LeBron James has been hot all night. I think he's going to keep shooting well. Like, well, yeah, probably. Like, it's more likely that he's going to keep shooting well than that he's going to, like, cool off, right? And I would say it's even, like, more extreme than that. Like, the likelihood, nobody can see really the way that, like, we reverse out of this. The The public sentiment on this is definitely that, like, Therefore, like, you know, more, more data loss on the advertiser side. And they're, they're for the third party data destruction. So like, uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think this is like a really, I mean, I guess I'm a buy on the statement. Like it's, it's succinct enough and dead on enough that I'm like, yeah, I guess that's true. Right. Like, it, it, yeah, I'm, I'm a buy on the statement, a hard buy on the statement. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. unimpressed with, uh, with it as a, trend of 2022 yeah, yeah. i think the I'm most sus within the context of this article the most suspect word in the whole thing is trend yeah uh but I, I look at it like this you know uh pardon me if i get the words off a little bit but uh traditionally whoever can afford to pay the most to acquire a customer right they they'll be the more successful brand and i just see this as like another wrinkle of that like now it's like whoever can pay the most to afford the data of a customer can now afford to acquire the customer therefore like being the better brand so it's right. say the 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 players have changed the game has remained the same yeah. um or yeah i guess that's an okay way to put it but at our level the game has changed pretty drastically so that analogy breaks down a little bit but uh, <laughs> yeah. you already covered us on the sports analogy there so we're good to move on yeah, there we go okay oh so uh yeah the view we have on this i mean do we i mean i'm a hard buy on the buy? statement simply because he didn't he didn't uh uh he didn't like use any words that make me be like, Oh, like you said, trend is the most suspect word in the whole thing. It's like, yeah, I'm a hard buy on this statement, but I'm, I'm unimpressed with it as a trend. You know, it would make me really happy. And I know I'm springing this on you right mid episode, but I'd love to, I'd love to round out like a podium maybe at the end. And I think because of the laziness of this, I kind of don't want it to like qualify for that. Yeah. Like as, buy, hard buy, as hard of a buy as I am on it. I, yeah. I couldn't put it on a podium. It's a, yeah. it's a it's a buy, but it's a soft buy because it's not a trend of 2022 for sure. Like yeah, and, I think of it like this. It's yeah. kind of like chasing candles, right? Like here we go, trading <laughs> analogy for you. Oh, like man. if you just had a huge bull run, like like freaking, you just got a bunch of huge green candles in a row, and you put your entry, your long entry there. That it's kind of like that. It's like yeah, I mean, there's a good chance that trend will continue, but like you miss the hottest part of it, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, I think I think we're in agreement on this one. I, I we'll call it a buy, but it's like a soft buy. Um, and now I'm thinking about three. I want to put on a, a podium. So we'll see yeah, what we get. Right, right. 
Okay, uh, Trent, video to be the cornerstone. So <laughs> uh, video replace static assets and become the cornerstone of all marketing campaigns. Um, social media and streaming TV platforms will introduce new advertising products that emphasize video and even the retail experience will see new innovations in using video to engage customers and drive revenue. Is this the same guy? This is the same guy. <laughs> this is some lazy writing for This me. is the same. No, this is the same guy who gave this writer both of these trends. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. They couldn't even source 10 different like people's opinions. Like, come on. Yeah. It looks like both, each of them did maybe one or two. Yeah. So, so uh, first of all, this dude, Parkin, I don't know him personally, but like. <laughs> this dude is bro, from a time, another time. <laughs> bro. Yeah. Like your trends are, are not very trendy. You're, you are, you are missing you are missing the entry on on this uh, on this trend. So this, this guy's probably got like a barbed wire tattoo, armband, and like wearing puka shell <laughs> necklaces. And he's like, "You guys heard about this stuff yet? It's hey, crazy. It's, it's trending." Parker, you watch this episode. Feel free to rip us in the comments because maybe you're way more successful than us. Probably you're being please, quoted. Please, please, please do open invite to come come on our show. Like, yeah, come on our show and be like, "No, you guys are the idiots." Because no, uh, I'm sure you're smarter than this, and maybe this is it. Could be lazy writing. Like, yeah, I said a lot more than this, but this guy like really dumbed it down, right? Um, okay, this trend has been the prediction trend probably for like five to ten years now, and so here's here's where I'm at on this: is that I'm actually I don't see a reversal out of the trend, right? So I do see a continuation here, but I do do think we missed the entry here. So I'm not a hard buy. Uh, if at best I'm a soft buy and I also am not as bullish on it as most people are going to be because it's so easy to be bullish. Like, Oh, video is video, video, video. The, the thing is statics aren't going anywhere, right? Like it's look, there are three stat four static ads. I'm currently looking at while we read this, like, um, you know, like it, it's, as more, he says, like, as more placements with connected TV and retail experiences, okay, as more placements open up, so will more static placements, right? Like, as we get into the metaverse, we'll have even more static placements, right? Like, or whatever, right? Like, if we, if we assume we're going to the metaverse. Um, so, yeah, I mean, statics, statics are not going anywhere. And, uh, and so I'm not, I'm not that bullish on this trend. Like, I don't know if I'm set full, I don't know if I'm a full sell, like, hey, I'm going to short this trend. Uh, but like, I'm definitely not a buy. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stay out of the market right here, but if I have to buy or sell, uh, I'm going to sell for two reasons. One, because I definitely think we missed the entry and two, because I think it's counter market, right? Like with so many people saying like, oh, this is just such an easy, easy statement to buy into. I'm like, yeah, but you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm more buying on statics while everybody else is dumping statics. Yeah, this is another one where it's like we're somewhere in the middle between buy and sell, but this one for a different reason. It's not because you can see both sides of the argument, right? And there's like, you can make a case for it over here, over there. This is just because we're like lukewarm on the middle. I share your sentiment entirely. I think obviously videos are a cornerstone of marketing online. Yeah, yeah, dude, duh. Like, <laughs> sorry, sorry to dumb it down so much, but yeah, dude, duh. Um, uh, it's been a cornerstone for a while. Um, he's saying it'll be even more so, I guess. Sure. Maybe, but like, so we'll see what 10% more video this year than last year. I'm like, that's probably just like the same increase year over year. You know, I don't, I don't call it a trend. I'll, I'll soft sell with you, even though video is important. Don't hear what we're not saying, but yeah, statics, they're not going anywhere. Use them. Yeah. Okay. Next point. Number seven. All right. Great escape from the digital noise. This one, I'm going to admit, this one kind of caught me, like, out of nowhere. And I know I'm not supposed to give away what I think of it first, but I kind of like it. Basically, it's saying, like, old school mailers could be back. Like, people this will appreciate is, There's it. another point that says this. Is, okay, go ahead. <clears throat> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> probably, it was probably even numbered, so you read it and I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this is funny. Okay, go but ahead. I'll just read this. Uh, I'll read where the the sexy stats come in. According to Canada Post, 92% of people surveyed read direct mail and 71% share it. That, first of all, seems kind of unbelievable. Maybe Canadians are more diligent about sharing their mail content, but I can't imagine sharing physical mail contents at 71%. Like, that's crazy. Um, but maybe. Um, while your audience is bombarded with digital messaging all day, Direct mail breaks through in an authentic, unexpected, nostalgic, and tangible way. John, you got a hot take here? I've actually done quite a bit of direct mail. 
Um, but not in 2022, you haven't. No, no, not in 20, not since probably 2015, 2014. Yeah. Uh, okay. I got to think though that like direct mail probably hasn't been revolutionized since 2014. Um, maybe the list building, you know, is a little bit more concise and better and stuff like that. All right. So my main thing that makes me question this is, uh, yep, here we go. Very next one is the same person and, or is the same thing and it's the same person so wow. basically two points in a row from the same person that say do direct mail jordan stevens i'm not going to click i'm going to guess that he is like you know there's an angle there yeah right yeah. Uh, he sells stamps. He's a digital marketing consultant uh i'm going to guess that you know he's some kind of connected like i'm, I'm going to guess that in some way he benefits from people increasing he's direct mail so he's these a stamp, a stamp salesman clearly what's that he's a stamp salesman clearly yeah, yeah. So according to Candy Post, 92% of people surveyed read direct mail and 71% share it. Uh, I am very skeptical of those stats. Um, what does read may mean? What does share mean? What does, you know, like, like look at it? Yeah, everybody like looks at it and people who can read probably can't help but like read something a little bit that they look at. Um and are we talking about like postcards? Are we talking about like envelope pieces? Because it's true that if you use an envelope piece and it isn't like clearly a sales message, yeah, most of it will get a high open rate. Like people right. think it's real mail until they read like a sentence of it and realize it's a sales pitch, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, versus like a postcard. Yeah. I mean, people read the headline because they can't help it and they throw it. So yeah, 91%. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's true, but I'm very skeptical of that of that stat, like, you know, and, and what it reflects 71% share it. That's where I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah. I don't, I, I, I would have to read this, uh, read the, the details of this survey to really buy into this. Uh, I am a, I am a very big skeptic. So, so I'm not a buyer. This is a tough one. Cause I'm not a buyer or sell here because I actually all said and done, I actually do think direct mail is underutilized and can be effective, especially envelope pieces. Um, and that, like, I've found that time, we have very good returns from direct mail campaigns, particularly enveloped uh, piece campaigns. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm not actually like too cold on direct mail. This is like one of those situations where like some guy's telling you about an investment opportunity and you know a little bit about it and you're like, yeah, like what he's telling me, it's not bad. But like this guy is so sketchy about this particular investment opportunity that like, I don't think that I can, I don't think that I can invest in this one. Like maybe I believe what he's overall telling me and I'm going to go with direct mail. Uh, so I guess I'm a buy, but like this, this whole statement, and I'm going to guess the next point too, I have a high level of skepticism on. So this is one of the first ones, and I, I agree. First of all, Forbes, this is the last time we're featuring a Forbes list because what is going on here? There's like duplicates, same guys quoted. It seems like, like it, it might be like a paid, a sponsored oh, article sure, sure. without oh, being a sponsored How article. dare somebody make content to try to sell stuff? That's crazy. Yeah, no, right. We would never do that. No, but I will say this. Um, I have a different perspective on it because I have never done actual you know, physical mail uh, for marketing. But I got to say, I'm kind of sold on the idea here. I, and I'm thinking more so like, I, I know this isn't included, but when you get a package, when you get the thing you bought online and it's got some like hard copy, like thank you or something. I mean, maybe I'm old fashioned, but those things mean quite a bit to me. Like it's kind of dumb. I know they didn't like handwrite it usually or anything like that. But like, I am kind of a sucker for a tangible deliverable and if it's true, like post-purchase, I guess I'm for pre-purchase too. I've just never really thought about using it in that way. Um, I can see it kind of actually doing exactly what it says here. I mean, how many ads do you scroll through in any given day on, on all your collective social feeds? I mean, for a lot of people, it's hundreds, right? And how many even pieces of mail, including bills and stuff, which I don't think obviously can't be including that in these stats because, you know, <laughs> we're not sharing 71% of all of our mail, that's for sure. So I have to... I guess they're talking about just advertisements um but like how many how many ads do you even get mailed to you so just by the sheer number like I, I think you you put yourself in a unique place and it's one of those things where it opens you up to different types of avatars some people convert through different messaging and through different uh modes of messaging so it's just one of those things i would say it's pretty cheap as i would 
guess anyway, right? I don't know for sure. Maybe <laughs> it's not, but I we'll, would think we'll get into it a little on the next point too. But all right, let's yeah. let's get into it on the next one. But I'll say I'm a buy here. I'm a buy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Probably this not a podium. Is, I do probably wonder not a podium like, buy, but it's probably what is podium. what does share mean? Because it's like, uh, <laughs> do you mean like when it's addressed to your significant other, you hand it to him? It's shared. No, like, it means you threw it away and the garbage man saw it. <laughs> yeah, uh, something. <laughs> anyway, trend. Advertising postcards reach people where they live. Uh, basically a repeater of the last trend. This one specifically talks about postcards. Uh, they're lightweight, visually appealing, and they stand out in the mailbox. Like, really? They stand out in the mailbox with the other 15? <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, during the last five years, we've seen an increase in advertising advertisers using postcards to reach their audience, and we expect that trend to grow. All right. So again, I'm, I'm sorry. You go. You go. But this, so this is flat mailers. Flat mailers are non-enveloped pieces like, uh, like that. Like that's yeah. a yeah. flat mail advertisement. Just so uh, I think we, we alluded to this, right? That like we prepared each other point. I took the odds. You took the evens. So I was unaware of this at the beginning. Uh, so, but I'm kind of, I feel like I'm forced to like juxtapose this to the last one. So okay. all the same reasons. I like the idea. I like the concept behind it, but in comparison to it, I, I, I think I'd, I'd sooner uh, dive into uh, enveloped messaging than postcards. So I'm a sell, okay. soft sell, but same for the same reasons, I generally kind of like the idea, but. Right. Okay. So let me drop a little bit. I'm definitely no direct mail expert, but I have done direct mail before. Let me drop a little knowledge. Some knowledge. Uh, some knowledge about direct mail. Uh, flat mailers are pretty cheap, like you said. So flat flat mail is pretty cheap. Printing the postcards pretty cheap, and sending them is pretty cheap. And uh, you know, a lot of it with flat mail is about the list, right? Like how good of a list do you curate, um, and like how how relevant to, are they? Uh, because it's yeah, it's I mean, it's it's just trash fodder flat mail is so the i mean the fact that he's like oh they stand out and like that's definitely an overstatement like flat mail is a volume game right like you gotta send a lot of them to a good list and like hopefully you'll get the returns because it's cheap enough enveloped mail or let's call it unique mail so packaged pieces like manila pieces uh that is not cheap enveloped pieces are not cheap uh and but they do have a better open rate they do you do like you could put a good sales letter in an enveloped piece and you hook somebody with that first sentence. Like you might catch somebody reading your whole two page sales letter. Right. So um, yeah, that that's probably like kind of the main thing I have to say about mail and uh, it's not easy to make it convert. So that's what I would be careful with. So if, if, if you are like, I'm a buy here too, because I do believe in direct mail. Um, what I would do if I, you know, were looking at an e-commerce brand looking to dive into direct mail is I would start with probably some flat mail because it's cheap and because you can start with a low budget. Uh, and I would send it to customers and like try and get customers to rebuy with flat mail, you know, and or select, you know, your top 100 200 customers and send them enveloped pieces, something like that, um, you know, or find like a really, really solid list. So then, and then dive into like maybe cross promotion, right? So find another brand very similar to you, has a similar market and see if you can get like an envelope piece out to their list without them, you know, sharing their mailing, their customer's data with you and stuff like that. So that's kind of where I would go with it. You know, if I were, if I were a brand, I would start with like very, very well curated lists and uh yeah just experiment you know with flat mail and envelope because it's, it's not that easy to make mail work um yeah. okay yeah, so so we're uh you're so i'm a i'm a, I'm a buy i'm a buy on this but... compare it to the point before if we're already saying which one's better than the are you more hot on eight or seven Oh, seven. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of enveloped pieces personally, but okay. so, like, yeah, especially we, as you start to get out to cold audiences, it's like uh, building good, good, building good mailing lists and then having good enveloped pieces that actually can be like a great recipe for success in direct response advertising. Yeah, I believe it. So I think we, we share that same uh, thought. So, all right, yeah. moving on now. Trend number nine, we're, we're getting to the end here. Uh, digital storytelling separates amateurs from pros. 
So this is basically saying, I mean, there's been a trend already for the last year. So again, they're kind of jumping on a hot trend. Uh, they're, they're saying that companies don't, companies are coming to a realization and many are struggling with this, that the products they're selling are not about the brand. It's about the consumer. And it's about showing how the product that they're selling or the service they're selling will affect the consumer, not, not uh, unique selling points as much about the brand itself, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's kind of the gist of it here. Um, and it's about using storytelling and, st and, and, and being relatable is another word they use. So, um, yeah. that, that's kind of, I think that that summarizes it pretty well without, without giving analysis on it. I don't think I can say too much more. Yep. Okay. So, um, the like storytelling increases good storytelling increases sales is not a new concept at all. So this one's a little bit cheap in that it's like, you know, this is just a known thing in the world of, of advertising, direct response to advertising. However, it's, it's just repackaged. And, and I will put it in, in here's like my take on it uh, for quite a while. And then 20, so, so each successive year since, you know, Facebook advertising became effective and Facebook became the data beast that it is each successive year. Like it used to be like, you literally could just like throw anything up there and the, the, the traffic was so underpriced and the algorithm was so good at finding quality traffic that like you did not have to have good creatives to convert. You could throw like product page images up there and they would convert. And then it got a little harder and then you had to have a little bit higher quality products. And in each successive year that happened. And then in 2020, it sort of like band-aided this trend and brought it back two or three years because like this world situation made it so that uh, like a lot of people were willing to buy online again. And then Facebook, you know, that fed more, that for more, more data to the data beast and it got fatter. And, uh, yeah. So, so I think, uh, up until 2021, like a lot of people were able to do well and grow e-commerce brands, like at a pretty incredible rate without really thinking too much about their consumers, without really thinking too much about their creatives and like really getting into who their consumers are and how they speak to them and how they like tell a story about them. Right. And I would say that it's been the big struggle of 2021. This would be like, I mean, the, the great, like unreadable entry on this would have been end of 2020, but I still think that we've got a pretty good entry on, on this because I think a lot of brands are just now starting to like, it's just starting to catch. We haven't, we haven't had, had the big bull run on this idea yet. It's just now starting to like become clear to many brands that like, yeah, like you can't just slap something on Facebook anymore and it will spit you out profit. That's not how it works anymore. Like it, it's, it's like, uh, <clears throat> like interruptive advertising has been for ages. It's actually difficult now um, to get the creative right and, and get the messaging right and everything like that. So yeah, I'm I'm on board with this. I'm a, I'm a buy here. I'm a strong buy here. I, I agree uh, to a certain extent that this is kind of repackaged old information, but I'm going to plant a flag and say this is my number one overall right now for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, probably might as well. And I think that it's easy to to get kind of too like I live in the philosophy of marketing plenty, right? Like it's easy to get over overly uh, romantic or philosophical about your ideas around marketing. But I personally have seen this play out just in the last few months, like over and over again with different clients, you know, and right. it's not always in ways you think, you know, uh, one example that jumps to mind is uh, a rug brand we work with, you know, um, I think I might've even used this example before on this show, but uh, you know, a carpet a picture of a, of a rug, you know, it performs okay. Right. Then you just put somebody's feet in, the picture you just and that's the way people engage with rugs so like that is engagement that is showing how it affects that person right life. it puts somebody into it a little bit more right and i think although it's maybe a little bit of a stretch that's still a very speaking, simple example it's speaking to the principle here same thing with uh you know whenever we do we've had several brands that are uh, consumables you know like snacks or something and as they get like different like ugc and stuff the types of edits they choose to use um i'm like hey you know what you don't show a lot of, you know, the product looks great. They look excited to be getting it, receiving it, unboxing it. You know what you don't see a lot of is people trying it and, 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 and enjoying it. I'm like, that's pretty huge. That's a pretty big 
pretty big part. Humans are essentially monkeys and monkey see <laughs> monkey do when you see another monkey eating something and they're smiling and enjoying it you it, it's just in try. that it's in that that deepest part of your brain you can't get away from you go like i wonder what that tastes like <laughs> and that is those are just little examples of and that's not even going into like a full story i'm not saying you gotta have a beginning middle and end of right. every creative you don't Although have that can help to too. overkill it. Yeah. That and, can and help fact, too. Sometimes if you overkill it, you just lose too many people. Right. It, this is a case by case basis that can help in some situations, might not in others, but the principle, I think this is about the strongest principle and also on trend trend that we've right. analyzed today. Because it, yeah, because it, it, it hasn't been as needed and it's been like a hard adjustment for many brands. And you, you hit the nail on the head that it's not, we're not in that bull period on this yet. We are kind of, but not not in the, the yeah. biggest. If, if we would have caught this end of 2020, like that would have been the incredible entry, but we're still only a few candles in here. Like, I think there's another tier. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's another yeah, tier. We're, there's a continuation on this. Um, all right, here we go. Same girl, same person. Uh, what? No way. I guess I, guess I don't know whether uh, this person identified, like I don't know what they identify as, but same person. Um, Judgment Day for Facebook, Meta. Here is the gist of it. Uh, a lot of people have been like, oh, Facebook's been destined for a downfall for a na while now. I want to actually just read this part. I think the overall success of Meta will be determined by whether Zuckerberg is willing to step out of running the company to allow new energy into the organization. If Zuckerberg continues to stay at the set helm, the success of Meta, Meta will be diminished and not at the same levels as Facebook. So... The point is 2022 is sort of like this reckoning point for Facebook meta. It's a pivot point. Uh, but I think really, like, I will give this person, like, the very opposite credit I gave, like, who was the dude earlier who said, like, two super obvious ones. Like, that Parkin, dude. I think. I think it was Parkin. Yeah, like, you were, you were way too safe, man. Like, those aren't even, like, trends. Like, you're at the top of that trend already. <laughs> Yeah. Like she's what she's going so far as to say, like, yes, it's a pivot point. Not only is it a pivot point that she thinks it will pivot on whether Zuckerberg sex steps down or not. Uh, I will go ahead and say that. I don't know, like based on who she is, she's the founder of uh, three dog, right? Um, which there you go. A little plug for her, I guess. Founder of three dog, right? Uh, which is an agency. I, I don't know that she has the expertise to say whether it's like that th this will pivot on Zuckerberg ste stepping back down or not. And I don't know if I'm totally buying on that idea of like, that's what it's pivoting on. Uh, but I am buying on the idea of it being a pivot point. And they've already kind of forced the issue of it being a pivot point by changing the name of the company. Um, that said, I'm not like a big strong buy because honestly, it's like, I think people think of it as, as Facebook still, right? And and Facebook, uh, yeah, it might we might have a pivot point on Facebook in 2022 is like, do we get its continuation on Facebook, the platform, or do we start to see like this thing just fade into obscurity? But I don't think that's true of all the meta properties. Um, and so I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm a soft buy here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to read one other part of this just because it helps me for context and to, to sort out how I uh, judge this. Yeah. Um, this last part says 2022 will be a pivot point uh, for the company and many organizations are being more conservative with spending uh, with Facebook as they wait to see how this new brand is received and what opportunities it brings. That part, just from our experience, maybe not everybody has the same view that we do. I feel like that part is very true. I mean, not every not every organization is becoming more we've, conservative. We've had but some brands, are, we've had some, maybe one or two say something like that to us. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of brands are interested in diversifying, but at least right. with us, the way that like the brands that we work with at the end of the day, they got to chase the performance and Meta still has it, you know? Right. I, that is, those are great points. I do think the, the essence of that is true though. A lot of people are nervous is one word. I think, uh, I mean, it's, it is judgment day for Facebook. I'll, I'll buy this. I think it is judgment yeah. day. I think that part is true. I think, the difference between January 2022 and January 2023, what Facebook will look like, it's anybody's guess, you know, like what right. meta looks like. I don't know. I'm not going to future cast that far, but I uh, will say there is, there is definitely a degree to which 2022 is judgment day for Facebook slash meta. Um, and, and yeah, just can't argue that some people are becoming more conservative, looking for 
uh, diversification. And we've always been big on diversification. Don't build your, your business on, on the back of one thing. Um, and if you have that opportunity, diversify maybe a little bit more if you're worried about it. But, uh, but yeah, as you said, performance is performance. If Facebook's working for you, you're not just going to reverse out of that just for kicks, you know? Let me, yeah, let me put it this way. I would say more so than other times. So, so usually up to this point, up to like, you know, second half of 2021, the way things usually go are brand is very bullish on Facebook ads, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram ads, Facebook and Facebook properties, or what we will now call meta and meta properties ads, uh, to launch, they launch, they gain traction on that. And it's not until they realize how over-indexed they are on meta properties that they're like, can we diversify? Like what, where else can we get returns? Now brands that don't really even have all that much traction on meta. And like, they haven't even like conquered that beast yet are, are, are really like, it's like, look, you know, if we have to stay here, cause this is where the performance is, that's what we're going to do. But it's almost like they want something else to take, you know, take over and have the returns It's like, I would be happy to leave this behind if, if we could. Right. Um, or maybe I will say I'll be, I would be happy to like not have so many eggs in this basket, even though they don't even have many eggs in that basket right now. Right. Like yeah. they're already like, uh, I just want to put more eggs in more baskets. Cause I'm like, not that bullish on that basket. That's brand sentiment. So I'll, I'll put it this way. What she, her sentiment that like, it's a pivot point for meta because these brands are kind of ready to just pull dollars away. And, and to some degree you already have been pulling dollars away to put it where they can, right. To di diversify where they can diversify into Google if they can, whatever, uh, these brands are like, they're very, it's like, Hey, you guys have been black boxy for a while. And that was all good as soon as well, as long as you were getting me good returns. Uh, but now that you're not so much like we're is the, if an alternative pops up, we are very ready to definitely pull dollars away. So in that sense, I would say Facebook is in a little bit of a bubble here and in a bubble, they don't fully control because, uh, if another, if another platform, another interrupted platform, cracks the code and can get people strong results uh then you know it's strong results for less effort right uh then then the people will will move lots of facebook dollars there will move, move lots of meta dollars to that platform okay real quick uh, you know we were zooming through this early on and we, we've got a little bit more into it i think and uh so real quick i want to round out a podium here let's do the modcom edit Forbes needed 10, ModCom needs three. Okay, yeah. let's whittle this down to the three that we think are the most important. I'm guessing we share the number one. Yep, Pick number, number one, one is number nine for me. Yeah, so digital storytelling separates amateurs from pros. I even like the way that they worded that one better. It leaves a little bit of nuance to it. It's not necessarily saying it's new. It's saying that we're going to separate uh, the amateurs and the pros. I agree with that. I think that's the one overall. I don't think we need a lot of discussion on that. Number two is where it gets a little slippery. Do you have a candidate what's for number two? two? What's that? Yeah, what's your number two? You know, as far as like truth, and I don't know if it's really a trend or not, but I'm, I'm kind of wondering if Judgment Day for Facebook Meta might be my number two. I don't know. It's it's it's, it's uh, honorable mention, if nothing else, because just some of them I don't even think is like news. I don't so. know that I'm like a hard buy on it as much. Uh, I think it's like, it's it's the boldest statement. It's the boldest prediction in here. Mm -hmm. And I got to give it a podium for that. So for me, it's probably my number three. That's fair. But my number two has to be something that I'm like a harder buy on, I think. Yeah, um, we, we were, we're a little short on hard buys on this one. That's It's right. been tough. I mean, we had something to say about every one. Like, like we said, war on data. That's true. It's just not new. You know, uh, video being a cornerstone. That's true. It's just not new. Um, yeah. And I, I would foresight say probably, is the new priority. That's just untrue. That's always been a priority. <laughs> right. And so I, I would say that I'm actually like a pretty hard buy on. Um, yeah, I would actually say I'm, I'm, I, I'm probably here, maybe number two, like, where it's just, it, it's like, it, it is obvious, it's not new, right? But it is like, it's probably, I'm like, yeah, this is a pretty safe long, right? Like this is a pretty safe long position uh, if, you're, if you're on the e-commerce and digital uh, side. Whereas 
the, like number 10, it's a higher opportunity long position. It might give me bigger returns if I was a buy on it, but it's, I don't know that I see it as a safe of a position. So yeah, I mean, maybe our twos and threes are, are flopped or flip flopped or something like that. You know what I mean? It's okay. You just answer me one thing on the, on the, uh, on the reward programs. What, how did they word that? Um, loyalty programs. Yeah. Loyalty programs. How, how, I mean, what about, I mean, post-purchase email flows are like, sure. It's not a, 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 a marketed loyalty program. Right. But the concept is the same. You buy, we give you more reasons more to into what they're saying. Uh, I think that that falls more into like what they're saying, the new evolution of loyalty. Then program. I, then I'll, and that's why I'm saying it's not like th- it's a pretty safe buy, you know, I'll, con- I'll concede that. And this is, this is our two on our mod com list because that's just too, I mean, like you said, I mean, there's not that many loyalty programs online to begin with. Sure. They exist, yeah. but like none jump out to us as we're reading this. And I guess I was taking it a little bit further and, and I guess it's just like the, the mechanism will change, but I, I mean, I hate the way they worded it, but it's our number two loyalty is All not right. going anywhere. So overall feeling of this article as like a helpful article for e-commerce operators, marketers, stuff like that going into 2022. At a, at a 10? A 10. Five being average? Yeah, five being average. I'm going to give this a solid 2.8. Yeah, you're lower than I am, but it's definitely below average. It's not helpful. However... I do want to I said a solid 2.8. It's, it's a solid. <laughs> it's a solid very big fail. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's a solid well below average. Uh, I I agree not not a great overall article uh, but definitely a highlight in the midst of of like low lights is uh, is is Lisa yeah, yeah. Way to go, Lisa, face. MVP so, of the episode. Yeah, definitely want to meet her. Like, if you're watching the show, hit us up because we definitely want to have you on. Because at least you're like actually predicting trends and not just saying things that are already happening. Yeah, we're gonna go investigate, get caught up in Three Dog Rights funnel, and just yeah, be like, oh no, we're not a client. We're gonna be customers. And we're like, I don't even have anything to. I don't even have anything for you to like work on. But we just we just want to invite you onto our show and play some silly game with you. <laughs> yeah, probably that's gonna be it. So. All right. So uh, I don't know. You want the parting shot? You want me to take the parting shot? What you do, know, you feel? I mean, do you feel a parting shot? Like, do you have something left to say? You have something inside you, Casey. I think I do. I think, okay, I, go. I think I've got, I got something. Hit I need it. To get out there. Um, I think maybe one of the takeaways from this article is that there's a little marketing going on in this article, obviously. I mean, <laughs> as we deduced in the middle, it might be trying to sell you on a few different things. Ooh, weird. Um, I would say because things are named trends, doesn't make them a trend. Uh, things can be old and be coming back in style or have never really gone away, but just be repackaged as some new information that's old, you know, uh, especially the storytelling bit. That's the one that comes to mind over and over again here is that like that, who didn't think that was the case five years ago, even like, um, right. so, uh, I do think that there is some interesting, this, uh, this, this article, this list comes to a, a pretty, pretty exciting conclusion the last two are if nothing else compelling uh judgment day for meta being like a huge like whoa like uh yeah maybe maybe that's kind of how we landed on it right maybe maybe it depends on zuck's uh, future who knows yeah Yeah, who knows i'm not all that worried about it if facebook crumbles that's going to mean opportunity for something else and we'll adapt as marketers and brands will will continue to hire us because they don't know how to adapt (laughs) as fast and that'll be our job so, right. uh, you know, again, the players change. The game remains the same. I think that's my parting shot mostly. Um, and yeah, don't, don't believe everything you read on the internet. Yeah, absolutely. Fundamentals. I like it, man. Like, good parting shot. I, don't, I have nothing to add. No okay. notes. No notes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, guys, Modern Commerce, if you've made it this far into the video, you are no doubt one of our most, uh, you know. Deepest? Should we deepest, say deepest followers? Our, That's a weird way to put it. Deepest followers. Yeah, you are. You are. Okay. If you're this far in, you can handle that joke. It's fair to say. Yeah. But don't forget to like our video, please. Hope we didn't just like lose your like right there. You're like, I already liked earlier, but now I'm going to unlike it. Uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel so that you can 
you know, just like brag about your cool subscriptions on YouTube to your friends because that's what everybody does, right? Yeah, and they uh, share their mail too. <laughs> yeah, uh, drop us a comment. Tell us if you disagree. Lisa, drop us a comment. We we really liked your takes. Drop us a comment. Um, if you're not Lisa, you could drop us a comment too. Uh, and also, don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notifications about whenever we drop new content on our channel. And uh, we're trying to do it more regularly now. We're trying to trying to push the the timeline up a little bit and be a little more regular uh so we should be back at it any day now but until then we'll see you